So today we're going to be creating our own custom material in the material editor and kind of going through the process of doing that. Um, so what I've got set up here is I, I basically created a, a wall and applied a new material to it. So under materials, I've just gone down here and hit create new material and then applied this test material to that wall so that as we adjust and change this material, that wall will update as well. I have my view set on realistic so that way it's going to show the appearance rather than the graphics tab for this. So right now we basically just have this gray material. It's just a, a gray blob. Um, so we're going to work with this and, and build this into, we'll say we're, we'll use this as a say a stone wall or something like that. So I'm going to set the scene. I am going to go to walls since we're going to be using walls. I always like to make this kind of as big as possible. That way um, I can kind of see what, I'm, what I've got and the scale of it next to the chair and all that sort of thing. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and say under generic. Uh, I don't care what color this is because if I have an image selected, it overrides whatever the color is. Um, so I'm going to come down here and say, okay, I'm going to select an image. I personally have a textures folder um, and I've, I've kind of organized things in, in different ways. Um, I'm going to go to stone and under stone I have some stone backsplash tile, uh, stone countertops, solid surface like granite and quartz and things like that. I've also thrown brick underneath my stone folder for whatever reason. This should probably be, be labeled stone and brick. Um, pavers for exterior, but then I also have stone stone walls. So what you can see is I've got, I've got these thumbnails here and typically what I have is I've got the actual image and then I have the bump map directly after it. Um, sometimes if these are just generic stone textures they'll just be called stone whatever. Other times they're the name of the actual stone uh, if I know what it is. But you'll also see I have a lot of them that say stone and then it has a random number afterwards. What I've basically done is created kind of a naming convention for these where it's stone 96114 and what that tells me is it's this stone image the scale of it a good scale for this is 96 inches wide by 114 inches wide or 140 114 inches tall so width by height for what this actual sample size is in the real world. So let's say we use we'll use this one actually right here because I think this is going to be a good one to also show you uh, kind of tiling so I'm gonna click on that and it opens that up and if I hit apply you'll see I've kinda of got this just kinda of crazy view here so I'm gonna come in and say edit image and I know because of my naming convention that the width is going to be 96 inches and then the height is going to be 114 inches and you can play with this and figure out exactly what size and just kind of go back and forth to figure out what, what that wants to do. Um, so down here, you're almost always going to want to have this set to tile. The only time you don't want it set to tile is if it's a one-off image. So something like a rug, uh, you, you're probably only going to want one swatch of it. So I'll hit done and hit apply. And now that image is a little bit better and closer to scale. It actually looks like it might be a little too big, so let's go ahead and knock that down a little bit. So we're gonna set that, and maybe we'll go to like a seven foot and see how that looks. So seven foot, yeah, that looks that looks a little bit better. Okay, so right now you can tell this looks really flat, and the reason for that is it's just a two-dimensional image on a flat surface. We haven't applied a bump map or anything, but if you recall in the last video I mentioned that stone was a good uh, a bad one for seeing the tiling and what we're seeing here is these red stones call themselves out quite a bit as well as kind of this grouping of grays amongst the browns so we're seeing these two stone these two red stones on top of each other over and over and over again because it's taking this image and then just putting it next to each other and tiling it all over the place so if you don't have a big enough swatch of something, you're going to see those imperfections and those kind of unique elements to the material repeat themselves and it's not going to look as realistic as you probably want. 
this material, um, the project that I used it on, this ended up working out for me because it had quite a few windows on it and there wasn't a huge stretch of stone that went uninterrupted where you would see this stuff. So if I've got a window here and another window over here and that sort of thing, and it's breaking this up quite a bit, you're not gonna notice this near as much. So my stone is not gonna be glossy. I can take that down and get rid of that. It's non-metallic. Um, I'm not gonna have any reflectivity, so I don't need to mess with, with any of that. Um, transparency, obviously, it, my stone's not transparent, so I can get rid of that. The cutouts, I don't really have any cutouts, so I don't need an image there, or some self-illumination. So bump is going to be the big one. So I'm going to click on this, and I've got my, my stone here, and then I have the bump map directly next to it. So what I ended up with before, I'm going to kind of go back up here as a reference and pull this up and say, okay, I'm 7 foot by 8 foot 3 and 3 quarters. So I want this to be the same thing. So I go 7 foot by 8 foot 3 and 3 quarters. And hit done. Okay, so right now we're at 30. If I crank this up a whole bunch, you can tell it starts to get get a little bit, little bit bumpier. If I crank this down a little bit better, it's not too great. But let's say we let's say we go the other way and we we crank this up quite a bit. So the little graininess is doing okay but it's not working real well so this this bump map actually isn't a great one um, as far as setting things off so even inverting it isn't really helping too much so let's actually look at something else let's use a different stone pattern let's use um, actually this one up here we we'll use this one right down here so stone six, six, 66 by 66. So we'll go 66 by 66. Whoops. Got to turn off our, our option there. And then we'll add a different bump. So we're going to use the bump right after that. And I'll edit and say this is 66 inches by 66 inches. OK. Great. So now we can already see that this, if we take this all the way down back to like zero-ish, we've got a nice kind of flat, um, flat look to it. But if we turn that bump on and we start to crank this up a little bit, now we're starting to get some texture in the actual stone itself. If we go back the other way, um, it does the opposite. It kind of puts the, pushes the stone in as opposed to out. So this one's starting to read a little bit better. This render appearance up here also isn't a great gauge for what your actual model is going to render like so 800 is probably quite a bit I'm gonna back this down to like 430 um, and go from there so I'm not gonna throw a tint on it just yet we're gonna look at this and actually come in and see what this looks like um, rendered here so if I pull open my, my rendering dialog and let's say we just go to kind of a medium. Um, let's see what our, our shadows are on the back side. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to put a white background on this. And we'll go ahead and render that. So that we can see exactly kind of what this is going to look like um, as it's rendered. So that rendered really quick. So we can see it's, it looks okay. Maybe we want to up our up our bump just a little bit more so maybe we crank this up to like 700 and we'll hit render again and now you're seeing you can definitely see more texture to it now than than you did before obviously this is entirely bathed in sun so it's it's gonna read fairly flat just like any material in full sun reads fairly flat um, but we're we're getting some of the kind of in and outs and the more graininess of the the stone showing up as opposed to if we did not have that bump map let's go ahead and just turn that off entirely and now render it now it's going to read really flat so you can see the difference between that and then the one that we did before 
uh, with the graininess and the actual texture showing up there. So that's a quick kind of run through of creating our own sort of texture here. I have gone through and actually made these seamless. I'll find an image and actually take them into Photoshop and place them next to each other and get rid of the imperfections and kind of weave some, some images together to get the look that I'm after. So depending on what you're doing, um, creating your own material is definitely the way to go. Um, I've done the same with, obviously I have stone, I've got my own kind of bricks here. Um, I don't really have bump maps for for different countertop materials, but tile definitely. Uh, I've got some backsplash tile with some uh, some different bump maps and things like that going to it. So uh, the bump map definitely makes a big difference in how the render appearance of everything ends up showing up here. But we can also tint this. Maybe we want our our stone to be a little bit more of a, a darker brown. We can we can tint that. And then re-render it, and it's gonna gonna jump to a little bit darker, deeper brown. So, uh, when creating your own custom materials, uh, that's kind of a brief overview of kind of running through one. Uh, there's plenty of other other materials that you can create here. Stone, like I said, is is one of the trickier trickier ones to find a sample size that's large enough. Um, but that should give you a general idea of just kind of the process and going through and setting up the the image, the bump map, the sizes, dragging uh, the bump to get you where you need to be. Um, if maybe this this image is a little too bold, we can fade the image back a little bit, and if we throw a white behind it, it's going to get a little bit lighter because it's going to reveal whatever colors behind it um, more and more. So that's a, a quick introduction to kind of creating your own custom materials uh, and the process of kind of going through that.